but we want to talk about backups and business yes. continuity and what the difference between that is. Yes. And that, you know, that's a common question that we explain a lot of the time. And I, you know, I have to, we have to explain the difference between, you know, what is business continuity and what is backup? Uh, and, you know, you have, you know, that's your, that's your gig. Uh, so I figured I'd let you take a kick at the can and explain to us, uh, you know, what are those things and what are the differences? So, you know, work your magic, Desiree. Sweet. Wow, wow Sweet. these people. Yay! I hope so. I hope I wow people. Um, so for this continuity, talking about that RPO and RTO cal- calculator, if you have to roll back and it takes you a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks to roll back to the previous version, that's not continuity because you're going to lose a whole bunch of business during that time. So continuity is your hybrid cloud-based backup. So you need to have um, it be not just cloud. You need to have it so that you have a local copy and a a cloud-based. So you have a cloud-based and a secondary cloud-based because uh, let's face it, if something really bad was to happen and you had all your data stored in a data center in Toronto and then all of a sudden Toronto, the building gets on fire and all that data is gone, well, you need a secondary backup as well, um, such as with our solution, we have Calgary and Toronto. Uh, you need an image-based backup um, to be able to, like if my computer smashes right now, I can go to my husband's computer and it would take me very little time to be able to do this exact presentation with you. Um, Cause it's, and it's the way you use your computer on an everyday basis with all the programs and everything, the way you are used to using it. Um, the point of this is delivering that superior uh, RTO and RPO, uh, eliminating all your downtime. So when this does happen, whether it be as big as ransomware getting hit or whether it be as small as a, an employee deleting a file that they shouldn't have, you need to be able to have it so that didn't actually happen and you can continue doing your job and then with virtualization you can I can like I said I can go in and use any computer and virtualize into the cloud and use a computer as things are getting fixed Um, so all super important and and I'll tell you when we the most I would say probably at least 60% of the, the times that we see people utilizing their local virtualization or their local backup um hybrid solution or even their cloud solution is hardware failure uh, some type of hardware that we can't replace in a in a quick amount of time uh, it's something major whether it's a, a major internet router or something like that and they have to fail over to the cloud or they have to fail over locally because the servers failed and they can't get apart a for a day or two and or uh, some type of bad patch or update that takes down their server and they've got to restore to a previous point in time. Uh, So those are the two most common occurrences uh, that, you know, are very, very hard to mitigate, right? They're just exactly business as usual. Business as usual. (laughs) And then, so when you're looking at different solutions, because there is a lot out there, and now we've gotten to the point where we understand why we need to have a business continuity solution and why just having a backup, we don't know how quickly it's going to get back you up, up, back get you back up and running. You're not sure if it's tested. You don't know um, if you had a fire in the office, if it's you're able to go to the cloud or any of those steps, you need to find a solution that actually provides your business continuity. But then to top it off, what if your solution actually included ransomware detection? Talk about all these scary things. So with ransomware detection in the back end, when you accidentally click something, Every time you do a backup, each backup has a screenshot verification that actually notifies saying, hey, this backup's legit. It works. We know this. That already is a huge thing to help protect and save you guys because that's going to help you sleep at night. Instead of having to test it yourself, it's already done in the back end. So a screenshot verification. So then now you have one point and then two points. And then all of a sudden it notices between point A and then point B that there's a payload difference. Something's weird. Something's wrong. The system actually notifies and says, hey, there's suspicious activity. Let's roll back to the previous version. You only lost, if you're backing up every hour, you lost an hour of work, roll back to the previous version. Before you accidentally click the wrong thing that you shouldn't have or your employees click the wrong thing you shouldn't have. And then we uh, expedite to restore and delete the ransomware and everything's fixed in the back end before you ever have to do anything. Hmm. So it's a ransomware is running rapid. Um, we see it in the news every day. It's a completely an epidemic. We saw that the total 
paid by ransoms or pay, the total ransom paid by small to medium sized business, C acronym, um, uh, is over 750 million plus. And that number is just the amount that the government recognizes. So in order for the government to find that out, it's usually something with ins insurance. You get hit with ransomware and your insurance company says, hey, you need to let the government know, let the FBI know or whoever that that happened. So that's just the amount of money that the uh, the person who's got hit has let them know. But I guarantee you there's so many businesses out there that aren't going to make that call. And we know ransomware is running rapid because even just in the news, realizing a lot of these aren't even hitting the news, we're seeing monthly releases about ransomware attacks hitting everything from um, health firms to universities to schools to um, hospitals to lawyers. It's across the field. There's not one industry that is hitting. It's not. It's every single industry across the board because let's face it, you guys have valuable businesses and the information that you have is valuable enough to you that you will pay if you get hit, which we're clearly seeing by that 750 million plus. And we know for sure that whistleblowers are coming out every day, even in large corporations, uh, that they have covered up, downplayed, um, misrepresented, delayed reporting uh, on these types of uh, breaches. And then small companies that are at no, uh, they have no responsibility to report, they're just not reporting. Uh, they don't want this, uh, they don't want th this reputation out there. If they don't have to report, they're not doing it. So that's, a, that, that's only, really, I would say that's the tip of the iceberg. There's probably way more happening beneath the surface that we don't know about. Yeah. And then sadly, um, we're even seeing the US, um, the US government start to take notice. And as of October 1st, they announced that um, they, you might actually, the Americans who pay might actually face uh, US sanctions if they pay. And that goes down to when, who are you paying? When you are paying ransomware? Well, you're paying the dark web, the bad guys, the horrible, horrible. So in the dark web, this is where all of those things that keep you up at night and make you worried about your kids and your life and everything, that's where this money is being um, transferred. And that's where who you're giving your money to, um, all of those horrible people. So uh, as much as we see that in the US, um, Andreas, you were just saying that we're hearing it already coming across in Canada. We were talking with Sean uh, uh, from the, uh, our cybersecurity expert, uh, insurance expert, and he was saying that uh, the Canadian government privacy commissioner is they're looking at a way of making it, uh, potentially making it illegal for them to pay ransom. So if you, once you get it, even if you have cybersecurity insurance, you won't be able to pay it in order to get your information back. So um, they're trying to shut these guys out. It, it's a multi-billion dollar business, as you can see. So um, how, how the government's response is to say, you're not, you become the criminal if you pay it. Um, Which is fair. So it, if something was to happen, if yeah. the answer there is you're not quite sure, go ahead, Andres. And not all SaaS recovery tools are the same as well. Uh, some of the SaaS recovery tools, they allow you to restore the entire mailbox. So you have to download the entire mailbox. Then you can extract individual messages or calendar items or whatever. So you know, having the proper SaaS protection, it allows you to do individual items uh, and do it quickly. So your IT team can respond and get something restored quickly. Uh, again, when you're selecting your tool, it's kind of what you want to do. So. Awesome. Um, so all important, both agree, but that can probably be a, that's a pretty overwhelming thought and trying to figure out what that would, that cost to your business would actually be. So this is why we have a calculator for you. Um, Andreas can help you out with this at any point in time, please reach out, but this is 10 simple questions. There's six current data storage questions and four city of the business. And by the end of this, you'll actually know what your hourly cost of downtime is. So you have that educated decision. You can sleep at night. You know what the risk is to your business. We're working on trying to incorporate this into the website. So we're going to have it up and we should have the link down below uh, awesome. for this. Perfect. Excellent. With that, now you're headed in the right direction. You're amazing. You're set up. Thank right. you. Hone in on what they need to be looking at. So that's why we, we decided, hey, you know what? I'd rather just let you present your wares uh, and this is what you do and you know it very well. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. I had a good time as always. Um, yeah, thanks so much for having me and I appreciate you. Cheers everyone else for watching. Thank you so much for uh, taking, or taking your time of the day and paying attention to us. That's awesome. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon.